definitely success is to be able to pursue the things in life that I want to do. That means I need the money to do them and I need the time to do them. That's my idea of success. Family is my safe haven. It's where I can lock the rest of the world out and be around people who care about me. The problem is the environment has changed, the market is not the same, and the number one problem I see agents failing is they refuse to change and accept what the market actually is. You're a business person, and your business is feeding your family. So you have to do whatever needs to be done to accomplish that goal. And that means changing and looking at things differently. So it made perfect sense to us. This is the new beginning, the new way of doing things, a way of doing things better. So hence the term Rio Genesis. Welcome back to our session on learning how to be a superstar closer in real estate. Closers make the most money. Closers have the best life. You want to be successful, you need to learn how to be a closer. So that's what we're talking about, all the different closers, all the different types of closings and how to use them. So when you're done with this series, you'll be an expert and you'll make a lot more money. Now, one of the things that you can do here, closing is an art form. It takes practice, it takes experience, but there's some shortcuts you can use that can make you into a really powerful closer because again, it's not just knowing the closes. The most important thing sometimes is knowing when to close. So this is something that will take a weak closer and make you into a much stronger closer. And it's, it's kind of a crutch, but it's a very useful crutch and will get you where you wanna go. It's called a trial balloon. Sometimes it's called a trial close. Um, slight distinction, trial balloon's a little softer and subtler. Trial close is a little harder. It's still very soft closes but you're not really trying to close. You're trying to find out if it's time to start closing. That's the key. Timing is everything. So even though you may not be as strong or as experienced closer as you need to be yet, the trial balloon or trial close is kind of a cheat to get you there, all right? So pay attention to this. Don't have to spend a lot of time on it. It's a relatively simple thing, but its primary use is to gauge if a subject is ready to be closed, all right? You don't ever wanna start closing too early when not ready. You get pushback. Also use it to gauge interest level and find out where they're at and also to get a better feel for what type of property they want or what they want from you as a listing agent. You can, it's, you can use it to gather information too and kind of figure out if you're on the right path. So again, timing is everything and this will help with your timing, especially when you're new at closing. So it's all a trial balloon is. It's a harmless close you use in the form of a question to gauge the interest level and the state of mind of the prospect. In other words, what are they thinking? Now, an example of this is really simple. Uh, I've used this one before. You're in the backyard with the husband and you say, hey, you know what, this is a huge backyard. You gonna cut this yourself or are you gonna hire a landscaper? Listen to the answer carefully. And here's what I'm looking for. If he says, ah, I can do this myself, or he says, you know what, I'm gonna hire a landscaper for a yard like this. This guy's interested in the house, okay? You can do the same thing in the kitchen with the wife. It doesn't really matter what it is, okay? But if he says, I don't know, don't start closing yet. Because if he said, I'd cut it myself or I'd hire a landscaper, he's obviously thinking, if I own this house, what would I do? He's placing himself in the home. If the answer is, I don't know, they don't care. They have no interest in this property. I mean, it still may be the right house for them, but they don't have any interest at this point. Therefore, do not start closing. Another great thing to do, that, especially with young couples, um, typically young couples start out in apartment complexes and in one bedroom apartments, the master bedrooms tend to be pretty large, but when you move them into their first starter house, it's only 1200 square feet. Even the master bedrooms are barely 10 by 11, 10 by 12 sometimes. So what tends to happen, not so much anymore, but just as an example, uh, young couples tend to, when they get the first apartment, tend to buy these huge bedroom sets that don't fit in starter home bedrooms. So one of the things you can ask when you're at the master bedroom, and again, you're not in the bedroom, you stay out in the hall, one more person makes the room look smaller, don't ever walk into the bedrooms with the clients, you should know that. Anyway, ask them, well, I don't know what type of furniture you have, Mary, but would it even fit in this bedroom? And they'll say, no, or yeah, it would fit. All right. Either way, they're thinking about this house, okay? No, my furniture wouldn't fit, or yes, it would fit. If you get, I don't know, they are not interested in this house. And considering you're starting out at the front, doing the downstairs first, out to the backyard, and then back upstairs again, you're probably three quarters of the way through this house tour, and if you get an I don't know at that point, you are probably in the wrong house and you should probably just move on. But it's all those types of questions, okay? I don't know what type of living room set you have. Would it fit in here? What type of dining room set? Would it fit here? Okay, all these type of things. You can be in the garage and say, hey, John, um, were you planning on putting a workbench in? Yeah, well, where would you put it in this garage? 
And he'd say, oh, I put it right over there. This guy's buying this house. He's moving himself in. If he says, I don't know, he's not ready to be closed. It's either not the right house or they haven't seen enough of it yet. That's why you use trial balloon closes. Okay, that's a trial balloon. A trial close is a little, oh, let's just say it's a little more aggressive, a little harsher. And you can say something like this. Hey, guys, this is a great house. Um, is this something you're interested in? You want to try and write this up? Or do you want to go take a look at more houses? Okay, you gave them the option. Is this something you're interested in? And I wouldn't even go write it up. It's more of a sharp angle. But you can basically say, you know, what do you think of this house? Is this something that would work for you? Or do you want to go look at a couple more houses? That will tell you a lot. And they'll usually give you some interesting answers. You know, they'll go like, uh, this one might work, but maybe we can take a look at a few more. Or they'll say, no, nah, I think we can work with this one. Or they'll say, no, we definitely need to go look at other houses. You will get the answer you want. So that's more of a trial close versus trial balloon. It's just a little more direct, a little more aggressive. So <clears throat> they used interchangeably, and the differences are very subtle. Now, to give you some examples of how these are used, I'm going to use my wife. My wife is a ninja at trial balloon closes, okay? She uses them all the time on me. And I kind of laugh because sometimes I catch her and sometimes I don't. But I'll give you some examples. Uh, so we have a theater room in the house. We're sitting in the chairs and watching a movie. And she goes, do you think these chairs are comfortable? And I, I just know I'm about to get set up here. And I'm like, nah, yeah, well, they're, they're a little older. They're not as comfortable as they used to be, are they? No, and they starting to look a little tired, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, what's happening here and what my wife is telling me is I don't like these chairs anymore. You and I are going furniture shopping on Sunday to replace them. But if she came out and said, I'm going out and buying new chairs on Sunday and you're coming with me, I'm going to push back. I am a male. That's what we do. So she sets me up little by little with these trial balloon closes. Now, had I told her, no, these chairs are fine. What's wrong with them? I like them. Leave them alone. She's going to wait about a week and then do it again. It tells she when I'm in the mood to be closed, okay? So most women are experts at this, especially as wives, but everybody uses these all the time. So you're just looking to see what the interest level is and see how far you can push at that time. That's really what a trial balloon is. And I get that all the time. What do you think of the color of these walls? It's a little outdated, isn't it? And I'm sitting there going to myself, she's gonna paint the room. All right, she's gonna repaint the house. Okay, I know better at this point, but that's how they're used. Okay, and most people, again, my wife is an expert at this, and I know her well, and I love her dearly, but that's kind of what she does, and she does it to me all the time. She floats these trial balloon closes to gauge where I'm at, and then she sets me up. Then she goes in for the kill. So, just as a rule, females tend to be much better at this naturally, although anybody can be just as good at it. So, you're really just using a question that all you're trying to find it is how are you feeling so far? Gauge where they're at. You could also say, hey, do you have any questions so far? That's a very innocuous question. You're there to serve and help them, okay? Um, I really personally prefer to be a little more subtle with trial balloons because before I start a hard close, I want to know I'm, I'm in the right place because if you close too early, especially with a hard close, you're going to blow the deal, okay? So very, very important. Float your trial balloons, especially when you're new to closing and you're just learning. Trial balloons are harmless. It'll keep you on track and know when to close. After a while, you hardly ever have to use them. So think of them as a crutch where you're learning to be a super closer. Okay, but that's the trial balloon and trial close. Thanks. Learn the true secrets of real estate success for free from one of the most amazing real estate brokers in the country, Michael Crine. Never miss an episode. Sign up for freebrokerschool.com. Subscribe on our site, YouTube, or iTunes.